Hey everyone, uh, my name is Rich Freeland. I write music and make sound under the name Disasterpiece, and this is my first AI summit. Happy to be here. Um, today, I want to talk about serialism and sonification in Mini Metro, or how we avoided using looping music tracks completely by using sequential sets of data to generate music and sound. So in music, there is a technique called serialism that uses sequential sets of data, known as series, set about on different axes of sound, like pitch, volume, rhythm, note duration, etc., working together to create music. That cat is music. <laughs> in Mini Metro, we apply this concept by using internal data from the game and uh, externally authored data in tandem to generate music. So here's a demo. Catch all that? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, oh. Uh, okay. So you might have noticed that the game has a clock. Uh, the game is broken up into time increments that are represented as hours, days, and weeks, though of course faster. And before diving in, it's important to know that we derive the tempo of the music from the duration of one in-game hour, which is about 0 0.8 seconds. So we use this as our standard unit of measurement for when to trigger sounds. In other words, most of the sounds in the game are triggered periodically using fractional durations of 0 0.8 seconds. So <clears throat> in Mini Metro, the primary mode of authorship lies in drawing and modifying metro lines. They're also the means in which everything is connected. They serve as the foundation upon which the soundscape of pitches and rhythms is designed. The lines are represented by a unique stream of music generated using data from different sources. The simplest way that I can try to describe this system is that each metro line is represented by a musical sequence of pulses, bum, 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 triggered at a constant rate with a constant pitch. So I just gave the example. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> this rate and pitch is constant until they are shifted by a change in gameplay. And uh, each metro station on, on a line represents one pulse in that sequence. So if you, if you imagine a line as having like four stations, it's bum, 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 or yeah, like that. Um, so each pulse has unique properties, or well, some unique properties, such as volume, uh, timbre, which is the texture of the sound, panning, which is where, where you'd hear it uh, with speakers or headphones, left to right. And uh, these are all calculated using game data. Uh, and then other properties still are inherited from lower levels of abstraction. Namely, we have unique loadouts for each game level. So, you know, in Berlin, you might have like a kick drum and you might have this set of rhythms. In New York City level, you might have like different, you know, different, it's choosing different pitches. Um, and there are lots of like these sort of variations to keep things interesting. Um, some levels tell the pulses to fade in gradually. So instead of bum, 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 you might have mm, 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 mm. Uh, Other levels might tell the pulses to trigger using a swing groove instead of a constant rate. So instead of a 
dun 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 dun. You might have dun 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 to give it more of a old timey feel. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so the levels are differentiated in, in different ways. All of this musical generation is done using sets of data. And referring back to the, the musical concept of serialism, the data is quite often sequential or in series. So these numbers actually represent multiples of time fragments, or to put it more simply, rhythms. Assuming we take our uh, master pulse and subdivide it into eight subpulses, which is something that we do a lot in the game, our rhythms would sound like this. So here's our master pulse. And here's our subpulse. So that's that pulse subdivided eight times. Oh, now I'm gonna demo. Uh, in, the, in the case of rhythms and pitches, the data is authored, so we have more control over what kind of mood we'd like to evoke. This data is cycled through in different ways during gameplay to generate music. So let's assume that this is the pitch C3. Da. <laughs> Here's our pulse again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So we've got some authorated data generating musical sequences, and you, as you can see, the sequences sort of, uh, you know, they don't have to be the same length, so you get interesting sort of variation over time. But what about using game data? Ideally, we could sonify it to give the player some useful feedback about what is happening. Here's some data we might extract from the current state of one of the metro lines. So the uh, number of stations on the line gives us a sequence length. And then, um, you know, we pull different data from that. So we have the types of stations, the different shapes. Um, we have, you know, we, we could pull, you know, the X position of the station on the screen as a percentage. Um, we could pull the number of passengers from the station. And these are just a few, few ideas. And uh, we use this data to enhance our musical sequences so that this data becomes this data. So file set, we map the station types to different sound files that will play the same pitches, but have slightly different sonic textures. So maybe circles are bum, 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 and maybe triangles are dun, 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 and maybe squares are ka, 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 and then over time you have like bum, dun, ka, bum, dun, ka, like moving through the sequence, and you get little variations in the, in the sound. And then the screen position, you know, it's pretty common, but we'd use the screen position to map to stereo panning. Uh, and then, you know, we could calculate the volume of each pulse on the sequence using the number of passengers that are at the station as a, as a percentage of the maximum occupancy of that. So assuming the, the, assuming the volume, like the, the ratios are 40%, 60, 90, and 10, it might be like, and so now, the musical sequence for each line is operating on a bunch of different axes. Some are authored, and some are pulled from game data. And this is just one example as combinations of game and authored data are found throughout Minimetro's audio system. Uh, don't try to read all this. Just know that there's lots of game data and authored data being fed into the system, and it's all working in tandem. Author data is often used to steer things in a musical direction, while game data is used to more closely uh, marry things to gameplay. So taking, taking you know, pitch and, and, and rhythms and things and figuring out ways to 
more closely tie it to you know, what the player is actually uh, seeing and, and the kind of feedback that we want to give them. And so in some cases, authored data even made its way into other areas of the game. So basically using the audio system to, to actually control uh, visuals is, is an example. Um, so the passenger spawning was, was retrofitted to fire using rhythm assignments from the sound system. So bef uh, originally, when passengers spawn on stations, it would all happen at the same time. So say you had a station and you had three passengers spawn, they would all just be like, bah. they'd all just show up at the same time. So we use the rhythm, we use the rhythm assignment to, to basically say, well, why don't we fan that out and make it more musical? So instead of pop, it's like and those those are like subdivisions. And so it's all part of the, the same, uh, you know, rhythmic tapestry of the game. And you might ask why go through the trouble to do things this way? It's really fun. Uh, <laughs> Um, but beyond that, there are a variety of answers, and I, I could go into a lot of depth about it. But I think the most important reasons are immediacy and embodiment. Immediate feedback is often reserved for sound effects and not music. You know, UI, things, you do a thing, you get the feedback immediately. Uh, immediate feedback in music can feel forced, if not handled correctly. It can feel ham-fisted. Um, but this type of system allows us to bring this idea of immediacy into the music in a way that feels natural by you know, doing it in um, these measurable increments of time, which we all tend to think of as music. And so the granularity of the system allows the soundscape to respond to game state instantaneously and evolve with the metro system as it grows. And a holistic system handles all of the gradation for you. So when your metro is smaller and less busy, the sound is smaller and less busy. As your metro grows and gets more complex, so does the music and sound to reflect that. When you accelerate the simulation, the music and sound of your metro accelerates. When something new is introduced into your system, you're not only notified up front, but also regularly over time as its sonic representation becomes a part of the ambient tapestry. So, you know, you have, you have these immediate sort of like notifications of boop, there's new passengers, or dong, there's like a new station. But then also those, those uh, elements of the game also have an ambient signature that just becomes a part of the music. And it's just there um, all the time, just kind of like subtly reminding you, hey, you know, you have like a hospital over there, and hey, you have a stadium over there, and that sort of thing. And this, uh, all hopefully ties into a sense of embodiment. Uh, because all of these game objects have sounds that trigger in a musical way and all use a shared rhythmic language that is cognizant of the game clock and uh, uses game data to further tie them to what is actually happening in the game, things start to feel communal and unified. Uh, it's an ideal more than a guarantee, but I think if executed well, you can start to approach something akin to a holistic experience for the player. Thank you. Question for Rich. Oh, that's very loud. Um, so as a musician, I really appreciate sound design, especially being able to incorporate it within um, sort of what's going on in that world. And I'm curious how sort of what thought process and how long it took you to arrive at deciding to do what you did? Like how much sort of experimentation was there with something else or did you know right, right away that you wanted to build it off of the world state? There are a lot of different prototypes that I went through and I spent a lot of time just away from, um, away from the computer just thinking, uh, thinking about how, how I wanted to build sort of like a, this, this top-down system. And there was a lot, you know, there was definitely a lot of um, give and take along the way. There were things that we tried that were cool, that, but didn't really serve the, um, they didn't serve the, uh, the user experience. Like we had a system where the trains, ha you know, every passenger in the train, like we would use their position on the train as like a little like, um, like drum machine. And it was really neat, but it just, it just added so much cacophony that we just had to get rid of it. So um, there was definitely a lot of like, a lot of experimentation and just just trying to like conceptualize this sort of top-down system that would 
really sort of prioritize what was important for the player. And so we kind of figured, we, 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 we discovered that it was important to know like when passengers um, spawn and where they spawn. And um, w that kind of became like the, the, pr the primary thing that we wanted to give the player feedback about. And then let sort of the musical, some of the more musical stuff serve more as like an like a, like a underbed that would kind of just drop the, uh, the tension a little bit because the game can be, it, it seems kind of like a zen game, but it's actually can be really stressful to play. It sounded like you were in charge of the music and the implementation, is that, is that true for the games? Yeah, so um, I, I worked really closely with, with our programmer um, on sort of the low level implementation as far as like uh, just, you know, making sure it's optimized and running smoothly and, you know, quashing technical bugs, but um, we did it in Unity um, using using this plugin called um, G Audio that that uh, it, it runs very smoothly, and so we got to do. Uh, or I did a you know it's all it was all done in C sharp, um, basically just subdividing update loops into musical uh, increments. Cool. So you were able to kind of work with the programmer. You weren't doing it all on your own, but you were kind of. I wasn't doing it all on my own, but I mean the the actual implementation was done in C sharp. Um, you know, using like individual sound files. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much.